Hi, this is Lou from Lou's Antiques and Collectibles, and today we're hitting Hog Creek Antiques. This is in the town of Allen, Michigan. And if you like what you're seeing, please subscribe, like us, and hit the notification bell. So Hog Creek is uh, a mall we typically go to when we're going either to Shipshawana or coming back from Shipshawana. It's a really nice mall, and um, the prices are very reasonable. This first shot is the outside of the mall. They have lots of... Uh, things on the outside underneath this porch hanging so you always got to check this area out first that was a really nice wicker plant stand and a uh, a pig with flying wings <laughs> made out of metal i thought that was cute too when pigs fly <laughs> you ever hear that saying anyways um so i always check the outside because there's always good things to to put to, for your display out here to put things into. And that wash tub was really neat that we just saw because it was only a one-sided one. That would be nice if you had a small home or a small area you wanted. So we're walking through and uh, the different dealers, like I said, have different outside things. Now this mall is kind of divided up. There's like a craft section, although there's some antiques in that craft section. And then there's the bigger section, which is which is more the antiques. And this is the front. And uh, this dealer has a huge amount of Christmas ornaments. Just beautiful. Prices are reasonable. So this one, I believe this Christmas display is all year. Here, so, and I love those little elves. They are worth some money. If you see the little elves, I sold, I think, every elf I had this last year. And also these ceramic Christmas trees. These are big sellers, so always buy those if they're reasonable. You can usually get about $30, $30 on up for those. And in this mall, I don't know if it's one dealer or several dealers, but they have a ton of jewelry. And they have big racks for $5 and cases for $20 and, and stuff for $10. And boy, I buy some stuff when I'm here. So we're going to give you a sampling of the various booths that you can see here and here's that jewelry person I think it's the same person where everything in that case was $20 each and boy do they have some nice stuff so here's some other dealers there's some porcelain items it's lots of glassware lots of depression glass in this mall and nice furniture very nice wood furniture and uh, here's this dealer who has some some signs and lots of books and even a dining room table. And here's kind of an overall shot of the aisleway. We wanted to give you a sampling of kind of what type of dealers you see in this mall. So if you decide to go there, you'll know what you're gonna find. Lots of glassware. Here's some more glassware. There's some Candlewick, and I believe there's some Lariat in the back there. A depression glass. And boy, that ship picture is beautiful. I didn't notice that when I was going through there. And a lot of people buy these uh, pieces and they make things out of it. So they had a big bin of those. And somebody's done some artwork on some glasses there. And those were not old, but still very neat. Uh, lots of Fenton, Pyrex, and here's some depression glass. And lots of glassware there on the left and some hall pottery. And there's a Shirley Temple doll. And something from John Lennon. I believe that's a book. Be interesting. And here's another aisleway shot. And there's about 150 dealers in this mall. So it's definitely worth a drive. And it's in Allen, Michigan. And I don't know if you've ever been in Allen, Michigan. But they're noted as being the, the antique capital of the world. <laughs> so there's a lot of antique shops around this area. So it's a definitely a fun destination. And give me a dollar, Ben, and I am happy for the day. So I am digging through this dollar bin, seeing what I could find. You know, a lot of folks don't have the patience to go through all this, but for me, it's, it's fun. It's kind of like a treasure hunt. Sometimes you find something, sometimes you don't. When they have a lot of cellophane bags, it kind of makes it a little bit more difficult. I could see why they do that, so things don't get tangled up. But it's hard to see, so you got to open them up a lot of times to see what's in there. And these earrings were kind of cool and i end up not buying them i'm not sure why because they had nice big red stones in them those were neat i might have thought they were too heavy i don't know it's hard to know why i made that decision at that particular day so and there's a bracelet there i passed on 
And here's some more ceramics and some pottery. And in Allen, Michigan, like I said, there's there's quite a few little antique malls um, there. It used to be the whole center of town had antiques. There's still some things in the center of town, but it's it's a destination that you could definitely spend the day at. This is just one of my favorite malls out of all of them. It's a newer one. And there's a refrigerator container from the Depression era. We always seem to find something here. And there's some candlewick. The glasses. And here's some more Depression glass, a variety of different patterns. And there's some license plates. And lots of Fenton. Oh, here's another dollar bin. I had me a little party in this one. Dollar each. That's right up my alley. So I got this little rhinestone necklace. That's a no-brainer. All the stones went here. It looked good. It was only a dollar. I mean, I could probably get about eight dollars for that. So I bought that for sure. And then I'm digging around in this bin looking for more goodies. But it took some it took some work. So I had to be patient. And here's some nice earrings that I ended up picking up. And there's some of those beady earrings that I must uh, not like those. Maybe the, the color was wore off the little beads. I think that's why I put those back down. And we were there during the summer of 2021. So this was a, a little while ago. It was right before our Shipshawana trip. Oh, now this bag was interesting. It really looked like amber. I wasn't sure, but it was a necklace and earring set. And I debated and debated on it, and I did buy it. It ended up not being amber, which was a bummer. But for a dollar, I mean, I got a, the earrings on the original card and a necklace. So I, that's $5 all day, even if it's not amber. So I wasn't too worried about it because I only spent a dollar for the entire set. So that was worth taking a chance. And here's some nice beady earrings with some pink pearls that I end up picking up. Throwing in my basket. <laughs> and continuing to dig through to see if I could find anything good on the bottom of that giant bin. And here's a neat pin. I ended up passing on that. I think the pin back was not in real good shape. So we took some time in this little area. I was looking for bargains. You know, if you buy things for yourself, you pay a little bit more. But at, at this point, I have an, enough of my own collections. I usually don't buy too much for myself these days. So I'm mainly looking for stuff to resell, which it can be a bit of a challenge when you're at antique malls because usually the prices are a little higher. But this mall is pretty reasonable. I have found some nice stuff in here to resell and make a profit on. So that's why we always seem to stop at this one. Plus they are dog friendly. And we had Annie at that time and uh, we can always take her through there and they're very gracious about letting you bring your dogs in there. Where some of the other malls in the area are not so gracious. So this one is definitely our, our favorite. When you're traveling, you often have dogs with you. So those earrings were cute. I ended up buying those too. And here's some Pyrex and some cookbooks. And beautiful jadeite, Fire King glassware. And a nice kitchen bowl set with jadeite. And here's some albums if you like record albums with a variety of Pyrex too. And this is Vaseline glass. And Vaseline glass glows under a black light. That's how you can tell it has uranium in it. So there's a nice selection of Vaseline glass. Sometimes there's glassware that's just that color, but it doesn't, gl it doesn't glow, glow. So 
In order for it to be the real Vaseline glass, it needs to glow. You need to take a black light to it. And it will shine like a neon color. Some beautiful lamps. Nice old ones. And here's some more glassware from the Depression era that's more of the elegant glassware. And some more beautiful clear glassware. Some candle wick again. And here's some of the showcases. They have a whole section of just showcases here. And lots of little porcelain ladies and figurines. Beautiful things. Here's a whole row of, of some of the showcases. They have several rows, like I said, of the showcases. But you always gotta check in those too. You never know, I've actually found some bargains in the showcase, believe it or not. So I usually scan those because you just never know. And here's another section of the mall with a little bit of an overall view of a lot of the dealers. And there's some old pictures. I've actually bought some old pictures from that dealer before. I buy those and a lot of times put them in uh, frames that have rhinestones in them. And uh, they actually sell pretty decent. But sometimes I'm looking for unusual pictures. Like that one there was neat because it had an old car and there's something with a ship in it. Something that's more unusual. And I like to buy snapshots because I can reproduce those. I don't have to worry about it. As much as something that was done by a professional photographer, you can't make copies of them unless they're a certain age. And this looked like a Vera Bradley heart. It was very unusual. Couldn't figure out how to get that open. And oh, they had some bags of jewelry. I had to check those out. You never know what's in those goodie bags. Could be junk, could be good. Those are like a treasure hunt too, so I'm all about buying those bags. <laughs> Oftentimes when it says craft jewelry on there, that means everything is broken in there. But that's the biggest concern. You could get a bag with some interesting, neat things in it, but then all the pieces are broken. But I do use the stones for other pieces so that that's okay too for me if I get it reasonable enough this was neat you could put a lot of little things in there for storage they had some nice signs in this booth and some military items and as you can see this is a fairly good size mall you could spend quite a bit of time in here. That's a beautiful globe that sits on the floor. And there were some maps on the walls. And some more depression glassware. And I believe that was open lace pattern. If I say a pattern that's wrong, please feel free to correct me because I'm I uh, try my best. I think that's oyster and pearl, but sometimes I'm not always correct. But I usually can tell if it is depression glass or not. Sometimes I get my patterns mixed up a little bit. And some linens and quilts. And here's a nice overall shot of another part of the mall with some fishing items. They pretty much have something for everyone here. No matter what you're collecting. And a nice sign and some gumball machines and some old telephones. And there's some moonstone glassware and here's some elegant glassware from the Depression era. And there's some Fire King. And there's some nice pictures and lots of glassware and ceramic items. A&W. Those mugs are pretty collectible. I've bought and sold those. They sell pretty good, too. I usually buy them for about a dollar or so. And I usually can get between 5 and $10 a piece, depending how fancy they are and how big they are. A 
Sometimes you get them at garage sales for a dollar or less. That's the best when you can get them there. <laughs> and some old doorknobs. And there's some nice clocks and a toy typewriter. And there's some old tools. And lots more tools. And some books. And more tools. This dealer had lots of tools. You could tell who's shooting what part of the footage. This was my husband's part of the footage. He's got all the tools in there. I'm sure he was in that booth for a long time. So, and here's some hand drills that he was looking at. Some folks like to collect old tools. And lots of books. Here's some more case items. Big variety. And here's a very large showcase with lots of goodies in there. And some old toys. Oh, that's a cute one. And an old lunch pail. And oh, look at that mobile gas pump thing. That's really cool. And some Harley Davidson items. And more lunch pails. Lunch pails are big collectibles. Oh, I love these pins. Cranberry glass. Lots of Fenton. Beautiful. And here's some more overall shots. And now we're coming into the craft area of the mall. And interesting enough, there's a lot of crafts, but there is some antiques mixed in there. So I always go over here. I've been pretty lucky and actually found some cool items. Like that little mesh, mesh purse was really cute, but it was a little too much money for me to pay. But boy, that was nice. I believe it was a Whiting and Davis. And uh, lots of new home decor. Beautiful things for your home in this section of the mall. Lots of signs. And uh, very cute farmhouse decor. There was a whole bunch of rolling pins there and some lots of signs. Lots of wood signs. And they also had lots of metal signs too. And there's a bunch of hats in that one. And somebody makes some farmhouse furniture that's really pretty in there. I don't know if that's Amish built or um, someone locally that's doing that. But there was a lot of farmhouse furniture that was new but made to look old. And here we have some chickens and a couple cows. Chickens are always really good sellers too if you get them reasonable. We looked at these pictures, at these lithograph pictures, uh, mainly for my daughter. They were quite nice. But um, when we looked them up, they weren't as valuable as we thought they were. So it's always good to have your phone handy so you can look up items. This is my daughter, like I said, is a big Disney collector. Here's a nice piece of depression glass and yellow. People don't think of yellow as being depression glass, but it is. And this set here is a children's set, and it's made to look like depression glass, but that's actually a reproduction. You could tell by the thickness of the glass, it's more crude, and at the seams will um, show and you could feel the, the seams are quite thick so it's good to know if you're gonna buy a children's set what you're looking at there's some nice tin signs I do buy some of these um, they are new and I buy them wholesale usually you can get them for around five dollars a piece and you sell them for 10 or 12 not big ticket big ticket items but it does help you make the rent I usually sell a few a month so I have a bin of those these are cute little ceramic items. And head vases. Oh, I love head vases. I collect those too. And that was a nice one for 15. It ended up passing, but that was not a bad price. You have to be real careful with these to make sure there's not chips or cracks in them. Otherwise, the value really goes down. This black purse was really nice. And it was $10 and a little bit too much for me, but nice. But this compact, it was new, but it was beautiful. I really like this. 
was a mere compact. And it ended up being only $275. Oh yeah, that's a no-brainer. I bought that too. And here's a few more signs and some uh, metal cookware. And a, a neat old wash tub. I love these. These are really nice when you have them outside. You can put ice in them. You can put your drinks in there when you're having an outside party. Or people put plants in them. Or they just use it for decor. Rings galore! This dealer had a ton of rings. I thought I had a lot of rings. I didn't have any compared to that lady. And there's some doll heads. And this is Lou from Lou's Antiques saying goodbye and come junk with us again. See ya!